Hello, brothers and sisters. T today we're going to be talking about our death to the law through the body of Christ and how what the law serves for the Christian in our lives and how we're dead to it eternally because that's our position as saved believers. I'm going to bring us over to Romans chapter 7, verse 1. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which he hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. So then if, while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. So the law, the, how, the position of what the law serves in the Christian life is that we're dead to it. We're no longer to go back to the commandments or the entirety of the civil or ceremonial law. Because its purpose was to reveal sin because the law is the knowledge of sin. Because by nature, we don't think we're sinners. And, but when we try to keep what the law asks us and demands us, thou shalt love God with all of thy heart, soul, body, mind, strength. We think we can do it, but then we realize, wait, this is impossible. And then we find out we broke it. It said, who can save me from this body of sin unto death? That's where Jesus Christ comes into the picture. If you're not saved, and you, let, let's say you're in religion, you've been following the law your whole life, but there came a point where s there was so much sin, ab sin ab erupting in your life out of nowhere. It's because the law is the strength of sin. And you, re you realize, wait, I am a sinner. I'm worthy of death. But the gospel comes into play with Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. And the moment we believe that message, we die to the law because the end of the law is to everyone that believeth on Jesus Christ. Because the law was our schoolmaster to teach us we can't keep it. We can't keep God's holy, perfect law because the law is good, but we are carnal, sold under sin. And when we have died to that law, God is no longer expecting you to keep ordinances and laws because he already knows we're sinners by nature. There's nothing good that dwells in our flesh. All he is wanting from us is to believe everything that Christ has provided for, through us by the sacrifice of himself on the cross, which is the only thing that God's looking towards. And it was a free gift. All we did when we saw the gospel message, we re received the free gift. We didn't earn it. Christ earned it through his blood. And all he asked for us is to believe that simple message. And when we were saved, that's the same way we live the Christian life. Believing in what Christ has said through his scripture. And that's just simply walking by faith. Do you have anything else to add on to that, Thorne? Yeah, I do. Uh, some scripture that I want to share with you guys. Um, I'm sure you've heard of it before. It's in uh, Galatians chapter number 2, verses 16 through 21, where the Bible reads, It says, No man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. <clears throat> but if while we seek to be justified by Christ... We ourselves also are sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. If I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with, with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by law, then Christ is dead in vain. And they go over a couple of these verses. This talks about, you know, the title of the video, our death to the law. But we see that word 
or justified there, right? What does that word mean? Meaning declared righteous in the eyes of God. And it says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. So we are not justified by the works of the law. You are not justified by following all of the law. You're not justified, you know, by going to church and being a good boy. No, absolutely not. You are justified, as it says in the rest of that verse verse but by the faith of jesus christ and we have believed in jesus christ that we might be justified by the faith of christ and not by the works of the law for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified so the same way we get saved by that faith in christ is the same way that we are justified meaning declared righteous in his eyes simply by that, that faith and we see where paul talks about you know christ is not the minister of sin he says god forbid he talks about for i through the law and death through the law that i live in a god for we are dead to the law and we live unto God. And the life which we now live in the flesh is our flesh has been crucified with Christ on that cross a thousand years ago on Calvary. It's not us living, it's not our flesh is living. It says, Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. It's Christ living within us. And it says, In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So, life we live in this flesh, you know how we live the Christian life day by day is simply by that same faith we get saved by. Simply that faith alone and death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. This life which we now live in the flesh, we live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And the, probably one of the most intense verses of this whole chapter is, I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by law, then Christ is dead in vain. Paul says he does not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ Christ is dead in vain. That's very powerful wording. Right? Paul says, if righteousness come by law, then Christ is dead in vain. So we, we know right here, you know, it's not going to the law. It's not following all of these things, ETC. We know by it's our faith in Christ. And Paul says, if it is by the law, if it is by all of these 613 commandments, then Christ is dead in vain. So now I want to get to my next point. Right? What is the, the intention of the law, right? Well, we know that you know the law is the, the sting of death. The law brings forth a death and condemnation, right? Because that, thou shalt not covet. The law says thou shalt not covet. And you can go and covet, right? It's oh, I'm a sinner. I'm suffering condemnation. Right? So how do we use law lawfully? Galatians three, starting in verse twenty-one, it says, "Is the law in against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law." But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them to believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up into the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus right there so we see that there's nothing wrong with the law you know god made the law all the law solely the laws the law is just but there's something wrong with us right and we see that we are sinners you know the law cannot bring righteousness to us because the law demands perfection i guess what well, we are imperfect beings the law cannot bring righteousness to us right right it says for if there had been a law which could have given life a verily righteousness should have been by the law the scripture hath concluded all under sin right we're all we're all under sin we all make mistakes every single day right and it says and you know how we get justified that the promise by faith of jesus christ might be given to them that believe right the promise by faith of jesus christ is given to us to them that believe it everything in the christian life and everything in the christian walk always comes down to that faith that faith in christ it says but before faith came so before we were saved, we were kept under the law, shut up into the faith which after we were because we have no forgiveness, our sins are held against us, we're not I'm believing in Christ. We don't we don't have anything, right? We're still a part of this world. We don't have the spirit, we're not believing whenever we are in unbelief, whenever we don't believe in the death, burial, resurrection. And it says shut up into the faith which afterwards be revealed. It says wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. So we see the law brings uh, death and condemnation. I I come short of the law. Now I see my now I see my need for Christ. Right, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, our teacher, to bring us into Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, so after you believe, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. You are no longer under 
um, you're no longer under a law or anything like that. It says, for you're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. So we're all the children of God simply by that faith in Christ Jesus. So for everything for Christian living to to salvation and justification for absolutely everything in the Christian life. It is all by that faith in Christ for everything, right? And this can explain the intention of the law and how the law works. And then you saw the verses in Galatians 2 that it used to talk about, you know, the law has nothing over us. You know, I know there's a verse in Romans 8 that talks about how, you know, we're no longer bound by the chains of the law of, of sin and death, and but we have, how we have been given the, uh, the law of the spirit of life, and that spirit of life meaning, you know, liberty freedom you know for where the spirit of the where the spirit of god is there is liberty right we have liberty we have freedom there's no law there's nothing over our head no we have freedom we have liberty we have true liberty true life and that is all through jesus christ amen all right um Shim, if you have anything to say brother yeah i don't really have much to say i just have a few verses to share i might bring up a point or two okay so my first verse or my first few verses, are in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> I'll start in verse 5, 5 to 7. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given uh, unto us the earnest of his spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Walking by faith is walking by trusting in the promises of God. If we are to walk by faith, we are not to keep our eyes set on the things which are seen. The things which are seen include our own following of the law. So if we walk by what we see in ourselves or in others, we part company with Scripture, with the testimony of Scripture, which is that we are to walk by faith. Walking by faith, again, is simply trusting already in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ. If we walk by the outward appearance, and if we place our confidence in our own ability to keep the law, we, uh, we don't have that power, that, that strength over sin that Romans 6.14 declares, right? Because, in Romans 6.14, it says, For sin shall have no dominion over you. You are not under law, but under grace. And because the strength of sin is the law, that makes sense. So, the key to, to not allowing sin to have dominion over us is not to try to follow the law and keep all of what Scripture says in terms of our behavior. No, it's to understand that we are under grace and no longer under law. And that's the key. And my last verse I want to share, and then I'll hand it off to anyone else who wants to talk, is Colossians 2, verse 12 to 14. Buried with him in baptism, where also you, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. So, we have to recognize that we died and we were buried with Christ in baptism in order for us to also recognize that we are also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. And that that stands true in the face of other verses, such as Romans 6.14, you know. The sin shall have no dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. That that rings true throughout the testimony of of Pauline doctrine and how we are to live our lives as Christians, which is simply by faith, not by law. Amen. Amen. That's something to add to that. Amen. Go ahead. Um, so, Galatians chapter 4, starting at verse 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, God, 
sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son, and, if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. But now, after ye have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage? And that word bondage generally refers to the law, if I'm not mistaken. See, those who believe are justified, and we are God's children by faith in Christ's blood and his finished redemptive work on the cross. We approach God through Christ by his blood, and his blood covers us, washes us, sanctifies us, the whole bag. Mm -hmm. Anyone want to add to that? No, amen. That was great. Beautifully said, brother. Uh, so that'll be it for today's video. I'm, thank you for all you, that watched, all you brothers and sisters. I hope all of you have a God-blessed day. Thanks for watching.